Hi there, thank you for making time for us on The Trading Bell. Now that you can see me, I'm Malika Kazia. Thank you for joining us. And today, as you can see, I'm at the airport, at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. This is where you'd regular ch regularly check in. You know, you line up, get your baggage through, come here to the counters. But as you can see, it's empty. There's nobody, there's no movement, there are no passengers going anywhere. Why? All due to the coronavirus. So what are we expecting to happen when coronavirus does eventually, of course, leave us? How are we going to bounce back? And not just the airline industry in Kenya, but of course, world over. What are some of the trends that we are seeing? Well, I'm here to talk to Abel Gogo. He is the airports manager for JKIA, and he's going to tell me more about what's happening right now, what he expects in the future, and of course, their plans as well. All that and more coming up, but first, do take a look at his profile. Abel Gogo is a former Kenya Defence Forces pilot, Kenya Air Force, with extensive experience in security, military and civil aviation. He is the holder of a Bachelor of Military Science degree from Egerton University and a Master's of Business Administration in Aviation Management from Lynn University, Florida, USA. Gogo has additional professional training from the International Civil Aviation Organization and the Airport Council International in Aviation Safety, Managing Airport Security and Aviation Policy, among others. Hi, Evo. Thank you Hi. so much for making time. No hands, so we're just going to do this. And uh, maybe you can show me around and tell me exactly what's happening now. You know, in the new normal, what we want to encourage is... Uh, minimal human contact mm -hmm. as much as possible. So we have introduced this uh, new course case for self-checking. Uh, okay. So we want, first of all, to engage with airlines to see that uh, going into the future, we will uh, try, we'll try to make sure that uh, you first of all print your boarding pass from home mm -hmm. and you highlight the key details as advised by the airline. But for anybody who is not able to do that on arrival at the airport, we will minimize use of those counters and you just come and do your own check-in from here. What about right baggage? Baggage also you'll be able to tag them from here. So we okay. have a, a couple of counters on this side for baggage drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So the next thing will be immigration. Uh -huh. We're also in uh, touch with uh, the Department of Immigration, especially the Director General. We want to introduce uh, the immigration audits. So you can also do self-processing at immigration. This might take a couple of months, but uh, that's where we're going in, uh, in the new normal. Wow. So that we minimize uh, this uh, human contact. So you, you'll yes. be able to take your own photo and yes, everything? Yes, just the way you scan your passport mm -hmm. and uh, you take your own biometrics mm -hmm. and uh, photo and, and then uh, the gates open, you just proceed to, to okay. boarding. Yeah. So when we talk about you know, the suspension of international flights from the government of Kenya, that directive was on the 25th of March, they extended it again on 6th of April. So what was it like, the scenario here in JKIA? What was happening when that announcement came? What was your first reaction? Okay, thank you very much for the question. Basically, uh, a couple of days preceding to that announcement, this area was uh, largely not very busy mm. because uh, people are slowing down on travel because of this uh, corona crisis. But then when the announcement was made, we had uh, multitudes of passengers now, those who were trying to travel back home in uh, various countries, Europe, the US, and uh, Middle East, Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the same was happening also on the arrival because we had a lot of Kenyans and our residents, Kenyan residents who were coming back home. So mm. that, uh, they are in the comfort of their homes as they watch uh, this pandemic unfold. Mm. So we had a busy session and then uh, after a couple of times as I had been directed, uh, this days that uh, these people are allowed to travel and it slowed down again and we only left with uh, specifically cleared flights for mm. evacuation of passengers to their respective countries of origin. So I'm seeing a lot of um, you know, different things happening here at uh, the immigration counters. So can you tell me a little bit more what's, what's going on here now? Okay. What, uh, what is happening, happening is that uh, initially, in um, the last era before Corona, we just had uh, this uh, stretch of our counters yes. for processing of uh, departing passengers by mm. immigration. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to increase uh, the number of boots. So as you can see, we have four more boots. Mm. This will be able to seat eight more immigration officers. Our intention is to increase the throughput so that we decongest this uh, customer touch point. Mm -hmm. And uh, going into the future, our plan is to introduce EGITs so that we, we minimize the human interaction. So you would just scan your own passport yes. and get your own photo? Yes, you'll be able to scan your own passport, do your biometrics, mm -hmm. take a photo, and uh, the e-gates. Then open. They open and you're able to proceed to, to departure. Wow, okay.
Okay, so right now we're at the cargo center. So tell me a little bit about this place. What goes on here? Uh, this is where we do processing of our uh, outbound and inbound cargo. All the cargo that's uh, shipped out of the country, then we'll go through the uh, cargo shed operators. These are certified by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority and there's a cargo regime that uh, regulates the operations. Mm -hmm. So basically as an airport, we have a separate terminals for cargo operations. And this, we call this uh, apron two, where we handle cargo. And then we have the passenger terminals apron one. And on the other side, we have a shared facility with the military apron three. But wow. for this specific area, basically we do import and export of cargo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, it is the most active at the moment. Well, now let's head over to Abel Gogo's office and chat more about what's going on and what are the plans post-corona for the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Thank you so much, Abel, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, when we talk about international flights, they were suspended on the 25th of March by the government of Kenya. Uh, on April 6th, the flight ban was extended for another 30 days. You know, what were the operations at JKIA like when that hit, when things started slowing down? What was the process like? Just walk us through what happened then. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Basically, we also got uh, to know from our government about uh, the suspension of our international flights. And... Uh, for us, basically, we are a facilitative uh, organization as provided uh, by the KA Act. And uh, we provide uh, infrastructure and uh, services on ground to facilitate uh, ground operations and movement of flights. So during this period when uh, we got the notice that our flights were going to be suspended, of course, there was a surge. Of yes. Airlines are flying especially to get Kenyans back home because uh, this is a global uh, pandemic and it's affecting uh, everywhere acro across uh, the world. So there are those... Kenyans specifically were a bit worried and they wanted to be home so that whatever unfolds, mm. they get to find all this as uh, within the comfort of their own homes. We also had a couple of uh, foreign nationals who found it fit to leave the country at the time, also to go home just the same way Kenyans were coming back home. So we were quite busy at the time and uh, with time then the decline started coming in until a point when uh, we had no other operations other than facilitating only a few evacuations uh, as approved by the government of Kenya. Okay. Now, when we talk about um, early April, of course, there was a cessation of movement by road, rail, or air in and out of the Nairobi metropolitan area, counties of Kilifi, Kuala, and Mombasa as well. So at that time, KAA also stopped all domestic flights that were operating in and out of JKIA, Wilson, Moi, Malindi, and the Diani airports for 21 days. So, you know, we look at the smaller airlines. We're talking about Jumbo Jet, Fly 540, and the likes. You know, right now, of course, it's a very trying time for them, but this even more so now. So what do you think they should focus on when it comes to dealing with this sort of uh, go slow? Uh, the situation currently, looking at uh, the Kenyan aviation uh, model, we mainly operate on a, a spoke and a hub model. Mm. So basically the small airports do feed uh, the, the main hub, mm -hmm. like Jomo Kenyatta, to fly long haul flights to different destinations, uh, to Europe, the US, you know, Asia, South Africa, and many other destinations. And these um, small airlines like Jumbo Jet normally feed into the wide bodies, uh, the main airport that is uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. But looking forward now, given uh, the pandemic is uh, locally in the country, uh, the session is impacting everybody. And uh, one of our key drivers of aviation is uh, tourism. Yes. Having been affected, now everybody flying back home, and we have no tourists coming into the country, then. Uh, they are all impacted and they are grounded for now. Mm -hmm. But looking forward now, we are expecting a, a slow growth. And uh, initially, we expect uh, the dom domestic market to pick much faster than the international market because uh, this is something that is within the control of our, gov of our government, being an inter internal processes. Uh, once the disease is controlled and the government is satisfied, then uh, this will be the first one to kick in. And we hope to be a key player in uh, getting them back on their feet as uh, we try to play our key role in uh, rejuvenating this uh, whole aviation sector and uh, giving uh, the necessary support as expected of us by uh, the government of Kenya. Okay, so of course passenger flights completely go slow as we've seen. Now it's back to cargo because a lot of that's what's moving. Um, so even on the 17th of April, we had quite a few uh, cabinet secretaries here when they were receiving that consignment of medical supplies. We've seen that um, KQ 
2764 took off from Nairobi to Joburg sometime in April as well, packed with medical goods and essential items aboard one of their Dreamliners. And also we've seen horticulture pick up. So talk to me a little bit about the cargo situation right now and the progress on that particular plan. Okay. Thank you very much for that question. As you may notice, uh, when all this cessation of our flights uh, was effected, cargo was exempted. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport being one of uh, the main hubs of cargo in this region, then definitely this was one of the key distribution centers. We have been receiving a lot of uh, cargo from uh, different uh, countries, and uh, recently from China, mainly medical uh, uh, equipment, and uh, PPEs and all that. Mm. And uh, locally, we have a couple of uh, domestic uh, cargo carriers, uh, for example, uh, Astral Aviation, which now they were, they were breaking back and uh, distributing uh, within the African region. So we have been busy, and uh, of course the demand uh, initially it dipped for vegetables, fruits, and other uh, hot cultural products, yes. especially in the European market, among uh, other destinations that we normally Flowers. Fly, fly to and that uh, we, we supply. Uh, this has peaked with time and the demand continues to increase. Mm -hmm. So we have seen even our passenger airlines now trying to convert their aircraft wide bodies to start uh, engaging in the cargo business. Yeah, that's, that's uh, actually where I was going with it because we have seen even uh, the likes of KQ, there's been a bit of a lack of investment in cargo freighters. So now that conversion, um, you know, is how long does that take and what does that entail? How I see it, I'm looking at this as a new model of operations. We have had a similar experience as a, a couple of years back in this industry. And uh, what we're expecting going forward as we resume, basically aviation will not peak at an instant. We'll have uh, to have it uh, coming up uh, progressively. And then uh, my expectation is that we expect to have some combi operations. Basically, when we talk about combi operations, it will be the same flight split to carry both passengers and cargo. Let's talk a little bit about the passengers that have been coming in, and that was, of course, we, we've seen uh, the flights that brought in uh, Kenyans in the past week from London, from Mumbai as well, from, from Guangzhou as well. So what was it like organizing this in terms of your role, and what was essential? For us, we have, uh, we've had uh, these uh, several flights coming in from different countries as we fly Kenyans back home, as I indicated uh, much earlier. And uh, we are the key coordinators because uh, the airport basically coordinates all the other government functions. And uh, as guided by the ministry protocols on coronavirus and all that, we have made sure that uh, we have made necessary arrangements to, uh, to make it uh, very explicit that uh, no, nobody will be infected within uh, this handling within the airport at the various customer touch points. So we had a lot of them coming in. We had uh, several stakeholders who were working with us to see this through. We got uh, support from uh, various ministries, first from our own ministry and uh, our board of directors. We had uh, the Minister of Tourism, who came in a very big way, arranging to get a uh, hotel accommodation for quarantine mm. of these arriving uh, Kenyans. We had uh, the port health, who were doing uh, the necessary screening as all these uh, Kenyans were coming back home. We had the police coordinating, the National Youth Service, they provided uh, all the transport, all these passengers. So the key role that uh, Kenya Airport Authority and ourselves as an airport were playing was to see that uh, there was seamless processing of these passengers so that we give them a good experience as we, come, we welcome them back home. Clearly, it, it must have been very multifaceted. A lot, a lot goes into that, I'm sure. So when we talk about the fact that they had to have their test results and things like that, what kind of measures do you see coming forth when things do normalize, uh, when it comes to sanitation, perhaps even distance between passengers in uh, passenger flights and things like that? What, are, what is your outlook? Because a lot of people have been predicting very um, you know, varied changes in the airline industry when all this is hopefully behind us. Indeed, it is true. We're expecting a lot of changes uh, going forward. And basically, first of all, it's uh, basically an adoption of what the minister has been saying over and over again about social distancing and uh, ex exclusive use of our PPEs so that um, we minimize any, any contact and the possibilities of infection. But as an industry, already we have seen innovations and uh, some of uh, the other countries and uh, the various aviation um, regulatory bodies, like uh, the International Civil Aviation Authority and the Airport Council International, they are coming up with procedures and guidelines that will uh, try to regulate and uh, harmonize the, the experience across the, all, all the airports going forward. We look at a couple of uh, challenges that we, we're going to be facing in the new, new normal, as we, we put it uh, these days. We have to look at uh, possibly enforcing uh, social distancing by marking, uh, providing ground markings. This would mean that now we're expecting very long queues, mm. and this will affect the experience in our airports. 
Uh, we are also looking at uh, blanking uh, some seats so that we also accomplish uh, uh, <coughs> social distancing within uh, our facilities, like airports, uh, the, the terminal themselves and boarding lounges. This will uh, inevitably reduce uh, the capacity of these facilities. So, so would that lead to a price hike naturally? Most possibly, and uh, the same will also be replicated, uh, obviously, with the, with the airlines themselves. Mm. We have seen uh, an example of uh, Emirates. They're trying to see how they can uh, change the seating arrangement to be able to accomplish this. So if you reduce the, the, the passenger load in the aircraft, then inevitably that cost has to be passed to somebody else, and that person will be the passenger, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, oh, you know, when we look at all sectors of the economy, of course, we've seen them taking a hit. But particularly, um, CS Ukuriatani for Treasury, he downgraded the country's 2020 economic growth outlook to between 1.8 to 2.5 percent from the six that was post-COVID, uh, pre-COVID, sorry. So, you know, the stoppage of international passenger travel has been one of the factors cited for this slowdown because tourism takes a massive hit and the likes. So what's your take on the bounce back um, for other sectors in relation to airlines? Basically, we all, we all understand the key role that uh, the aviation sector plays and uh, how much this industry contributes into the, the, the GDP of this country. Uh, tourism has taken uh, the highest hit, even uh, the manufacturing sector. Of course, uh, the flow of uh, raw materials is not as uh, fast as it, it has always been. So we're looking at uh, a cross-cutting element of uh, impact on the economy and industries because uh, travel is the key thing that is connecting people across uh, the entire globe. So what has it like been in terms of the human resource element when it comes to operations at JKIA? You're operating, I'm sure, at much less capacity compared to your regular. And how have you managed to balance that out for your employees? Are they on mandatory leave? What does it look like? Okay, I went uh, with a different model that was discussed and approved by the Board of Directors and our min line ministry, looking at uh, the scaling down of operations. Then uh, obviously that uh, spells out that uh, we don't require everybody to be here. So what we have done is, uh, first of all, to ask our colleagues who still had unutilized leave days to first of all proceed on leave and then uh, we have changed our shift patterns. So operating from a three-way shift to four-way shift and we're extending to doing a six-way shift so that we can have uh, long days away from work so we don't compromise on social distancing amongst uh, other requirements and measures as spelled out by the Minister of Health on uh, the management of this COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, and uh, you still have fire, security, ground flight safety personnel, of course, on the ground. And just give us an overview of the measures taken, you know, to safeguard them against the possibility of COVID-19. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have a couple of uh, recommendations and uh, guidelines that have been provided by our own uh, Minister of Health, which we have taken very seriously, including uh, whatever we're getting from uh, the Minister of, sorry, the World uh, Health Organization. And uh, our safety department has been uh, very proactive in providing uh, the necessary PPEs as guided. And uh, as I just indicated, uh, we have sent some of our colleagues on leave and we are working on a rotation basis so that we don't uh, really start to <coughs> congest our uh, working areas. So we are struggling to make sure that we maintain high levels of hygiene. We are providing a timely, very timely provision of our PPEs. And we make sure also that uh, these PPEs as, are utilized as we have been uh, <coughs> sensitized to do that. We have done a lot of sensitization. In fact, I think we were among the first organizations in Kenya when uh, this disease was announced uh, globally to start a sensitization, all the airport stakeholders. Mm. So we have uh, records for everybody, including taxi drivers, uh, these uh, <coughs> F&B mm -hmm. providers in the airport, our own staff. So we did an extensive sensitization program together with the Port Health, and this is a continuous process for us. So we are doing whatever we can to make sure that uh, whenever they are here at the place of work, we provide the necessary resources and uh, the guidance to make sure that uh, we do not compromise and uh, get the disease. In fact, uh, it is commendable that uh, up to this point in time, noting that everybody passed through this airport, we have no reported case at the airport. That's definitely good news. Um, even as we wrap up, you know, just your hopes for what you hope to see in the short term, at least when it comes to the scenario and hopefully what your particular airport contingency plan is when things do start to normalize. Actually, we have had a conversation between uh, ourselves internally. Mm. We have engaged with our board of directors and uh, our line ministry, the Minister of Transport. Beyond that, we, uh, we have a... Uh, some peers in the industry, and we are, we are seeing what is happening uh, globally. The 
International Civil Aviation Organization is uh, also providing uh, guidance material. We are working on that. We have a whole team that uh, is looking at uh, implementing measures to <coughs> ensure that we, we do not uh, fall back as we prepare for resumption. Mm -hmm. You will notice that uh, just yesterday I did release a letter myself inviting all the airport stakeholders so that we look at uh, post-corona. What do we need to do? And I'm, I'm even aware that it's trending in social media, but then uh, that is an internal document so that we prepare ourselves. By the time we are resuming operations, we are ready. And we want to assure our airport stakeholders and airport users that we are up to speed. We are, we are preparing. We are doing a lot of maintenance on the facilities. We are improving everything that we can during this time. We are taking advantage of uh, the current uh, uh, lull that is there in the industry and the, the quietness in the airport, as you can you can hear so quiet to make sure we do the most. <laughs> so we expect to surprise them by the time they're getting back to the airport as we resume operations. So when we walk in post-corona, we're going to see a whole different setup. We're going to be very, uh, you know, yes. new. Yes, there will be a wow effect when you come back. <laughs> okay, we look forward to that, of course. And thank you so much for speaking to us, Abel. Most welcome. Thank you. As you can see, emptiness yes. all over. But we got so many insights from Abel Gogo as to exactly what's happening at JKIA, how they're preparing to take on the future post the coronavirus. I'm sure passengers everywhere, people all over the world are hoping to be able to fly sometime in the future. And we keep that hope alive. Thank you for watching The Trading Bell. I'm Malika Kazia. Keep up with us on our social media handles that are appearing on your screen. Once again, my name is Malika Kazia.